noticed that turned all the way up, is it? I know I'll check and make sure it's kind of like 70 before it kicked on. Alright, so. So get your meter out. Here's the volts. Okay, so we're gonna test. Uh, thinking yeah I don't know I used to know it was like that when I got here <laughs> no, let's see here I can't even get to that to see if that's reset that's tied into that one Can you check the amps or something? Like no, that? it's there's a reset thing. I checked all the limits with that. Oh man. So That would have been nice if I can just move that off. Hmm. So it's not going back on now? No, it's not hitting the channels for some reason. I can't even get in there. So what might have to happen is we may have to cut this pipe. And, um... Torsionist? <laughs> Something. Yep, that's switched. Oh, you got it. You're a contortionist. Yeah, I told you, let me try it. You know. <laughs> so, how do you <clears throat> put it back in there, Mr. Show Off? How are you supposed to do it? Just lift it up? And... Well, it's supposed to go on that channel somehow. I don't know which side it's hanging up. Thank you. 
not going in that channel. Just like that, Tyler. Yeah, it's teamwork. No. You're gonna have done that without me, right? Yeah, I'd still be struggling. <laughs> so we'll, um, we'll did you lose that. power at all? No, I didn't lose no power. Okay. I was about to say what caused that. Um. Well, if a lot of times if we lost power, if it was shut down uh, during mid-cycle, the heat from the heat exchanger would trip that. Um, so if it was in mid-cycle and you know you just t came over here and took the switch and flipped the switch, or um, or if the blower stopped blowing, mm -hmm. that will be another. So that's what these two safeties are for. Their blower limits so it doesn't overheat oh, okay. so you said that they were talking about the blower on there they they were talking. i think he was checking the blower and it was getting like high amps well i was getting high amps on this because it's noisy this is going to have to be replaced um sooner than later because you're going to find yourself with the same problem. another no heat situation yep yeah. The guy shut off in mid that cycle when the burners were still going on. I might have tricked it. Could have been, yeah. Who was it? Uh, Hoskins Heating. Oh, okay. Yeah. That don't surprise me. Really. I'm surprised that you didn't try selling you a new furnace. <laughs> they got somebody. I know somebody that made. He had to go buy a new one. So that should. Yeah, we've had a couple of Hodgson's calls before us and you know, we'll try to like show you a picture of somebody else's furnace and try to sell you one. Yeah, I'm not going to them again. <laughs> I've had them three times out here still. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs>
So I'm going to let this cool down and then I'm going to shut it off and then I'll bring it up to And it should be in heat. It's on par. Um, let me see here. Instead of putting this hold on so this needs to go and so there's two terminals there park and park which means so this is going to be this is going to have 110 volts mm -hmm. this here is going to have 110 volts on it so that's when the door is running okay. so obviously he missed uh miswired that so, yeah, so we're going to hold that. So we're going to do amp draw. Yeah, because originally when it started, it would back it up to the tensor I wanted. Yeah. I heard something click. Was that one of the switches possibly? Or? No, that was the board. Okay. That was the timer on the board. Okay, do you want that gas back there? Yep. Okay. So we're going to test amp draw first we'll do amp draw and this that's 1.8 that's about what that is 1.8 so we're okay with there so we'll do if you notice the fan's not running now See where the temp difference is, and then you can start going from there. And then you can kind of shut gas pressure, stuff like that. Did he throw a manometer on that on, on the valve? Okay. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, if he lowered it, it should be fine. Uh, it's just as long as it's just a tickle. I mean, I wouldn't have done it a lot, but that filter would definitely have uh, an issue with it overheating obviously. Driving all all my driving. Yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't place it in the right spot. Yeah I did not. <laughs> Alright so now you gotta find 
the spot. Gotta find a spot for this to go into. Basically, you were having problems with that super cold tense we were having? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I never had that problem before. Yeah. I woke up and it was like 68 degrees. I got it at 772. Yeah. I switched well, it. It went for a second. So, did you, did you replace this filter before or after the cold temps? After. Okay, so most likely that filter. Yeah, after I saw it. That filter was definitely the culprit of the reason why you couldn't achieve temps, um, especially with these cold temps we had. So basically, these systems are only designed to run about 10 to 10 above zero, and then once we get down to minus 10, minus 15, yeah. they just struggle. They just struggle, and then if we gotta we got a plug filter like that. That's just gonna impede uh, impede the operation, obviously. Well, at first thought. Keep on running, try to get right, but it would just shut off. But it was probably it probably went off on. Didn't you say you went off on high limit? Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, so if it went off on high limit, which makes sense with that filter being plugged, it went off on that high limit down here. And then when he shut this thing off, possibly in mid cycles, what tripped that other oh, no. other other resettable limit? Yeah. yeah. 